I was telling Brother Enrique about Brother Martin. <laughs> he told us that he visited a church recently over here. He said the preacher didn't have a tie on. The thing said he had his shirt tail out. <laughs> Brother Martin looked at him, looked at his clothes, and said, if you haven't got no more clothes, I'll buy you some. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was. <laughs> um, all right, our message this morning is entitled Under New Management. We've seen that uh, time to time over the years. Uh, you drive down the road and you see a sign at the store and it says Under New Management. And we search. And we ask, what does that insinuate? And I'll get to that in a moment. But let's read, if you will, Romans chapter 8. And we'll read uh, down to Romans 7. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, please note the Spirit is capitalized, meaning that's the Holy Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son into the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because a carnal man is enmity against God, for it is no, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, if you're walking after the flesh. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Once again, we, uh, when we see a sign that says under new management, we want to know what that insinuates. Uh, you may not have thought about it before, but it says something perhaps was lacking with the first management. Is that what y'all think when you see it? Or secondly, the new management is better and superior to what's been happening. I thought about that as I was preparing this message. And I have a cousin that Denise knows back here. She met a while back up in Huntington, Texas. She and her husband uh, stopped and ate at this man's establishment, his restaurant. It's called Dean's Meat and uh, Restaurant. He uh, furnishes meat and what have you for the people, for a wholesale basis, but he has a restaurant there. Well, he sold out his restaurant here a while back <laughs> for a couple of years, and he bought it back. He just couldn't handle it living without it. We got back in it, and I noticed on his website recently, it says, under old management. <laughs> that would be fitting in that case. But folk, it's a problem. A Christian, if we go back to old management, we get in trouble, don't we? Yeah. 
The new management of a Christian is far better than the old management. Uh, it's a lot like a committed Christian. Our first manager that we came here with, the flesh, we had no choice over that. We were each one born with the sin nature. It was there. Not something we chose, but each one of us have that burden of the flesh. <laughs> but we were all born with that nature. Uh, the media lately focused on what's happening in our world. And they showed this young guy last weekend that drove all the way from Allen, Texas, which is near Dallas, 10 hours to El Paso, and his words were to kill a bunch of Mexicans. And he did kill eight nationals while he was at it. But they said that was his motive. You'd wonder what kind of creature or person could do that kind of thing. Wrong management. November the 3rd, 2017, a little less than two years ago, a young fellow by the name of Devin Patrick Kelly walked into First Baptist Church down here, a little town outside of San Antonio, and proceeded, he went there to kill his mother-in-law, but he didn't find her, so he killed her mother, along with 25 other people that had gone to worship the Lord. By the way, there was about 40 some odd people in the, in the church that morning, and all the rest of them that were not killed were wounded. But what kind of madman would do this kind of thing? Again, both the capabilities are there. In other words, a human being is capable of anything. Doesn't matter how bizarre that it may be. They're capable of it, as we well see it. Paul said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. If you would look at your paper again, we're Romans 7 verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Long come a fellow, you talk to him about the Lord, and they say, well, I'm a pretty good guy. Well, it, it depends on whose version you want to listen to. Paul pointed out, he said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. We believe in the doctrine called total depravity. Man is totally depraved apart from God. And they've been talking about solutions uh, to stop this mass shooting and what have you. Well, how are you going to stop those airplanes from crashing into buildings where the guns have nothing to do with it? I tell you, the problem is, is men need to get saved. They need to turn their life around. And they can do that through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're here today. Is to promote that message.
The Lord said there is none good, no, not one. The flesh seeketh her own. The flesh cannot be changed. It is corrupt. Well, if you think about it, a person without the Lord has a bad manager. Period. If he's without the Lord, he's controlled by the flesh. That's why Jesus said you must be born again. Y'all remember when he made that statement, Nicodemus said, that, that's a hard saying. How can an old man be born when he's old? Can he enter into his mother's womb? And the Lord told him that he must be born from above, or born of the Spirit. And that's done when we, we're born again, when we realize we're sinners, and we let the Lord remove those sins through his blood from our life. And that is the only way. The only covering for man's sin is the blood of the Lamb of God. And when we place our faith in Jesus, the Spirit moves in and takes over our life. That's why the Lord said, Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. But the new management that moves in is not the world, just the opposite. The new management is the Spirit of God that only He can give that moves in. Now, here's where a lot of people have problems out we run into in the world of false religion. If you would, read the last verse on your page. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Now, Pentecost will tell you that it says they shouldn't commit sin, but it says doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and what does it say? And he can not sin. I underlined that. The Lord didn't need any help, but I underlined it in, in the paper that I gave you. Now, how to explain that a moment? You just said everybody's a sinner. I sure did. The Lord said it. I believe it. But why does a saved person still sin? The answer he reverts back to old management. Like Dean McMullen and I was talking about a while ago. Don't let old management, the flesh, in charge again. Let the spirit rule and reign in your life. Somebody said, well, if that person saved, he can't do that. He can too. Because he lets the old person take over. He walks after the flesh again. And folks, that's a mistake. The Lord gave a law. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth in the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit, we shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. What's that mean? Folk, the Spirit that God moves in into our life cannot sin because it's of God. But that flesh still craves the things of the flesh. And if we walk after the flesh, we displease God. And really, we count our life for naught. King David is a prime example that the Lord gave of someone that reverted to the flesh. 
The only man in the Bible that God says he was a man after mine own heart was King David. The only man. And yet, he saw Uriah's wife Bathsheba taking a bath top of the building and he lusted after her. And they said, David, that, the king said, that's one of your soldiers' wife. Uriah's wife. He's out there fighting your battle. David said, oh, bring her on over. And she was under the king's command. Don't know the story. He said, they said, to, He'd take care of it. He'd lied and tried to deceive, tried to make Uriah think it was his child that she was carrying. It didn't work, did it? David said, well, I'll just get rid of that guy. Had Uriah killed. Get him out of the way so I can have his wife be a clean slate. Add to his harem. Already had 10 concubines. This is a man of God. The man that wrote most of the Psalms that we read. He walked after the flesh, didn't he? But folk, the Lord said, whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And you read what happened in David's life. Of all the repercussions of what he had done. His own son, Absalom, tried to have his dad killed so he could be the king. David began to lose his loved ones. God took that little child from him that he loved. But it was because of David's sin. Whatever a man sows in the flesh, he's going to reap in the flesh. Is that right? The Lord said, No man can serve two masters, did he not? There are two that seek to control us. There are two. Every person that's been saved has two possible motors. The old management of the flesh or the new management of the spirit. And folks, we get to choose. Which one we want to control us. That's why it's necessary that we stay close to God. That's why we come to church and Sunday school and worship the Lord because we don't want the flesh to reign in our life. And folk out yonder in, in eternity. We get to live forever with the Lord. To me, that makes it worthwhile for the little temporal time we're here, for just a little while that we're here, to serve the one that loves us and gave himself for us. Because we're going to live with him forever and ever and ever. And you get to write your own record. You get to leave your own legacy. But I can tell you this much. Now and in the ages to come, it's going to be a whole lot better if you walk after the Spirit. So my challenge to you today is let the new management rule and reign if you want to be successful for the Lord and give them the honor and the glory that do Him for all eternity.
all he's done for us. Have